Give you a warm welcome and welcome to welcome to welcome and, and welcome to and welcome to 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 welcome welcome to 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 welcome to
Here we have a Christmas quiz for you. Question 1. Christmas initials. GFM. Gifts given to Jesus. Question 2. Christmas anagrams. E H L T M E E B H. Question three Jesus's family. Name of his stepdad. Question 4. Christmas initials. O-I-R-D-C. Christmas Carol. Question 5. Christmas anagrams. N-I-R-C-A-S. E N F K E N Question six Jesus is family Name of his mum's cousin Question 7. Christmas anagrams. D-R-E-S-S-H-H-E-P. Question 8. Christmas initials. C-A. Roman Emperor at Jesus' birth. Question 9. Christmas anagrams. L-A-R-G-E-B-I. Question 10. Which direction did the wise men travel? North, south, east, west. Christmas anagrams L A M E M U L I N Question twelve Christmas initials A I A M Christmas Carol The answers will be given at the end of the service.
Now today, instead of a, a message being preached by one of us, what we've got is a, an animated story, the Christmas story in an animated form. And uh, we've got this from uh, Canon J. John and uh, his website, and he's made this freely available to churches to use at this Christmas time. And we do thank his organisation for making this available. So let's sit and watch this video now. The first Christmas didn't just happen by accident. It happened for a reason. And to understand that reason, we need to go back a long, long way. The Bible tells us that in the beginning, everything in the world was very good. God made people to be friends with him and with each other. He put them in a beautiful garden with everything they needed. Sadly, things went wrong. The first people, Adam and Eve, decided they wanted to run their lives their own way, not God's way. They had to leave their garden paradise and soon God seemed far away and the world was broken without God. But God still loved everybody and was very sad about what had happened. He decided to do something about it and chose a man called Abraham. God promised Abraham that through his children he would help to fix the world. Over many years, Abraham's descendants became the Jewish people and lived in Israel, the land that God had given them. Time passed. God's people kept getting into trouble, but God always rescued them. He sent messengers to remind them who he was and to guide them back to him. In order to protect and lead his people, God gave them kings. The greatest and best of those kings was David from a place called Bethlehem. In time, people built a big temple where they could be closer to God. But despite the messengers, the kings and the temple, God still seemed far away. God made many promises to his people that one day a special king would come who would bring God and people back together again. The Jewish people kept waiting for a child to be born who would be the promised king. Finally, 2,000 years ago, things began to happen. The first thing that happened was that an angel appeared to an old man called Zechariah who served in the temple. The angel told him that after a lifetime of waiting, his wife Elizabeth would have a baby son. This boy would be someone special. He would be filled with God's Holy Spirit and would prepare the way for God's King. The baby was to be called John. Later in the Bible, we read how John made people ready for God's King by baptising them in water as a sign that their sins had been washed away and their lives were clean. But the really important thing was what happened at almost the same time in a town called Nazareth. A young girl called Mary lived there and she loved God. Mary was engaged to be married to a man called Joseph. One day she was visited by an angel called Gabriel. <gasps> Don't be afraid Mary, God is pleased with you. Gabriel said. You are going to become pregnant. The boy you will have will be called Jesus and he will be great. The name Jesus means God rescues and rescuing is exactly what Jesus does. People will call Jesus the Son of God, Gabriel continued, and he will be a king like David, only with a kingdom that will never end. Mary didn't understand. There's a problem, she said. You need a man to produce babies, and Joseph and I aren't yet married. Gabriel replied, that isn't a problem for God. The baby will be made through God's Holy Spirit. This tells us that Jesus was not going to be an ordinary human being like you or me, but God as well. Mary bowed her head. I am God's servant. May your promises come true. She was so filled with joy that she sang a song to God, praising him for what he was doing for his people. Joseph was not happy when he heard that the girl he was going to marry was pregnant. But he had a dream in which an angel spoke to him, telling him not to worry. Mary had done nothing wrong and the baby who was coming had been made by the Holy Spirit. You might have expected that Mary would stay in Nazareth to have her baby but God had other plans. At this time, Israel was controlled by the powerful Roman Empire. 
ruled by Caesar Augustus. He needed more people to pay money to the government in taxes. So he ordered everybody to go back to where they came from so that they could be registered for tax. As Joseph was descended from King David and came from Bethlehem, that was where he had to go. He took Mary with him. It was a long journey and when Mary and Joseph got to Bethlehem, they found that there was nowhere for them to stay. The only place they could find was a room where animals were kept. This was where Jesus was born and Mary and Joseph wrapped him up and put him in a cattle trough. How very strange that when the king who will rule forever came to earth, he was born in such a poor little place. Bethlehem was a village in the countryside surrounded by fields where shepherds were looking after their flocks of sheep. That night, an angel appeared to the shepherds in a dazzling blaze of light. They were terrified. The angel told them not to be afraid. I am bringing you good news, he said. The one who will save the world, the baby who will become a greater king than David, has been born in Bethlehem. You will find him in a cattle trough. And with that, the night sky opened to show thousands of angels praising God. After the angels had disappeared back into heaven, the shepherds rushed off to Bethlehem to find the baby. Then they returned to their sheep, singing praises to God and telling everybody about what they had seen. The way that God told the shepherds to come to see the baby reminds us that Jesus came to earth for all of us, whether we are rich or poor. When Jesus was just a few days old, Mary and Joseph took him to the great temple in Jerusalem. To their surprise, two people at the temple realized who Jesus was. One was a very old man called Simeon. He told Mary and Joseph that the child would be a light to show God to the whole world. A wise woman called Anna recognized that the baby would grow up to be the king who would rescue God's people. The shepherds were not the only visitors to see Jesus. Far away to the east of Israel were some wise men who studied the stars. These wise men noticed an unusual star in the sky that showed them that a king had been born to the Jewish people. So they prepared precious gifts and began a long journey to try to find him. Now at this time, Israel wasn't just ruled by the Romans, but also a king called Herod. He was nasty and cruel. He was always worrying that someone would come to take his throne away from him. The wise men from the east went straight to King Herod's palace, expecting to find the baby there. When they explained why they had come, Herod became jealous that this baby might be God's king. Because he was an evil man, he pretended that he wanted to find the baby so he could pay his respects. He sent the wise men to Bethlehem with instructions to come back and tell him where the baby could be found. But he didn't want to take presents to Jesus. He just wanted to kill him. Guided by the star, the wise men found where baby Jesus was. They were delighted and opening their treasure chests, gave him gifts of gold, sweet smelling frankincense and a spicy ointment called myrrh. The way that God told the wise men to come to see the baby reminds us that Jesus came to earth for everybody, wherever we come from. As the wise men were planning to return to their own country, God warned them not to go near Herod. So, without him noticing, they slipped quietly away. As they left, an angel came to Joseph and warned him that Herod was going to search for Jesus to kill him. Without waiting, Joseph took Mary and Jesus and left for Egypt where they would be safe from Herod. Eventually, much to everyone's relief, King Herod died. Mary, Joseph and the young Jesus returned to Nazareth where Jesus grew up. But those who knew the story of his birth wondered what was going to happen to him. So that's how Jesus was born. The Bible also tells us why he was born. It says that Jesus was God with us. Remember how long, long ago people had turned away from God and become separated from him? Jesus was not just an ordinary baby. He was God coming to be one of us. We couldn't get back to God, so he came to be with us. Many years later, we have the Easter story when Jesus died on a cross so we could all be forgiven. And then Jesus rose from the dead and returned to heaven. Although Jesus is now in heaven, he is still God with us. God with us.
And now Chris is going to lead us in a short meditation on who is Jesus. This is something that she's written herself and, uh, and filmed for us. And uh, I think you'll agree that it, it it's, uh, really sort of helps us to understand who Jesus is. He was Mary's son, a brother, a friend, a carpenter, a man. He is a scribe of all scribes. He's a great teacher. He's a healer. He is a miracle maker. He's the son of David, the Lion of Judah, the maker of heaven and earth and all that is in it. He is our holy sacrifice. He is our saviour. He is the bread of life. He is the water of life. He is salt and light to this world. You are the victor, the mighty warrior. You have conquered sin and death forever. Jesus, you are my all. Let us come together now to pray. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for this Christmas time when we can remember again the coming of your son Jesus into the world. But we thank you too, Lord, that it didn't just end with Christmas, that Jesus, you came for a reason, and that was to bring reconciliation and salvation to, uh, to humanity. Lord, we thank you for your willingness to come and serve the Father and give yourself for us. We pray now, Lord, for the new year that is fast approaching. We pray for a stemming of this virus, the spread of this virus. Father, help us, each one of us, to do our part to try and stop the spread of this virus. We pray, Lord, for the, uh, the just smooth rolling out of the uh, vaccine. But Lord, we do remember those countries around the world where there isn't the, uh, the infrastructure, there isn't the, uh, the systems in place to make this so easy. And Father, we pray for all those aid workers who are going to be working so hard in 2021, trying to bring the vaccine and relief and help to those communities around the world where there is so much suffering and hardship. We continue to pray that you would help us and other churches uh, to connect together, Lord, through the coming year. Lord, it's coming up now for 10 months that we've been meeting like this. And uh, Father, we pray that you would just help us to continue to connect as a church and fellowship in other ways with one another. We pray too, Lord, that people will find you, will find faith in you, will give their hearts to you, Lord Jesus, <coughs> in this coming year, and that your church will grow, Lord, and that, that 2021 will be a time when uh, there is an, un, uh, you know, an unknown uh, of growth in the church in the UK. And Father, we pray that you would help us to be salt and light for you in our communities. We pray, Lord, and ask you to give each one of us now a fresh infilling of your Holy Spirit as we approach this new year. Equip us, Lord, for the tasks that you have ahead. Lord, take us where you would take us. Lead us where you would lead us. For Lord, we know that you will be with us in any and every circumstance, because that's what you've promised in your word. So we bring these prayers to you now, in and through the name of Jesus. Amen.
Well, thank you for joining us today. And uh, I hope that uh, you know God's blessing upon you. And uh, we'll be uh, meeting again next Sunday and uh, online again. So keep an eye out for the emails and the, uh, the posts on our website. And uh, I just pray now that you have a very peaceful new year as well. So let's pray uh, our final prayer this morning. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. And may the Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace this year and next year. Amen. Amen. Now, instead of having our normal closing credits as we do at the uh, end of our services, we've got a, a little bit of a, a look back at 2020 and some of the video snips that we've got from this last year. So I hope you'll enjoy them. Uh, and uh, yeah, I just hope they're a blessing to you. Take care now. See you next year. Bye bye then. Bye. Bye. Or maybe we need the right footwear on so that we don't hurt our foot, so that it doesn't bend over and, and uh, damage our, our ankle or anything. Or the Good morning. Hope you're all well. <laughs> <laughs> and today is, have we got to, <laughs> have we got to light it now as well? Let's start again. <laughs> Do it right the way through. Okay, sorry. Right, let's do this again. Right? Yeah. Yep. Ready when you are. Yeah, well, well, well it comes in here on the communities. Let's try it again. Let's go on, Nick. Welcome. Oh, let's do like the dog. Let's take any of them. Right. Well, do you want to do it again, Miriam? Okay, so I've got Seth stirring away there. We clear our thoughts of any meanness and nastiness. The reading this morning, sorry, I've got itchy <laughs> paint in this pot now. Okay, I'm going to need Nick to help me again. And I'm going to go in between. A bit more paint. beautiful flower. Is that recording now? 
So what am I pressing? The red button. Bit louder. Welcome to Romney Marsh Community Church. Although I'm standing in Sainsbury's. <laughs> the guy. That, uh, <laughs> the girls Brigade. Girls Brigade, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, welcome to Romney Marsh Community Church. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Welcome to Romney Marsh Community Church! Yay! Sir, Tell me when. Do I have the same reading for, by the way? Yeah. You no. do? No. Right. no. Okay. Okay. Yay! Yeah. Thank you, thank you, thank you. You're happy and Hallelujah. Hi. Right. Okay, let's go. I don't want to be loud. We're in. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Romney Marsh Community Church. Yes, and good morning to you. And this is our last service of 2020. And a bit later on this morning, we shall be looking back at some of the things that we've done this year. And I can't do this with the dog. No, you can't. <laughs> right, come on, lie down. Lady. Look, sit down. Lie down. Oh, God. Right, you can go <coughs> over there. Right, lie down. <coughs> 